Introduction to Signals, Part 2. We're going to continue with the classification of signals. Now we have causal signal versus anti-causal signal. A causal signal is when you have a situation where it is zero for t is less than zero. If you refer to this diagram over here, the signal starts when t is equal to zero and you will have nothing on the left hand side because it is zero for t is less than zero. So anti causal signal will be the opposite of that. Next, we have left sided signal versus right sided signal. So this one is quite straightforward. So a left sided signal is when you have a signal on the left hand side. So you will have a zero for t is more than the period that is given to you. So over here, you will have t happening at this over here. So everything that is on the right hand side would be zero. So a right sided signal is when your signal is on the right hand side given that your t here. So when your t is less than the period given to you, that would be zero. Now, signal representations. The first one, we have a unit step function. So a unit step function is denoted as ut. So every time you see ut, that is a unit step function. So it is denoted by this equation. So you will have ut is equal to 1 whenever your t is more or equal to 0. And when your t is less than 0, you will have 0 step function. So if you refer to this graph over here, a step function is like a ladder. So whenever you have a ut, a step function, t is more or equal than 0, it will be 1. So before that, it will be 0. So in much of our discussion, the signals begin when your t is equal to 0 or as explained earlier, that would be a causal signal. So such a signal can be conveniently described in terms of unit step function. So whenever that you want your signal to start when t is equal to 0, you just have to multiply that signal with a unit step function. For example, so the signal represents an everlasting exponential that starts at t is equal to minus infinity. This diagram over here. So the causal for this exponential can be described as this one over here. So if you want your exponential to start when t is equal to 0, or in other words, you want to make it a causal signal, just multiply it by ut, which is a unit step function. Next, we have a unit impulse function. It is denoted by delta t. So it is actually an approximation of an impulse. So note that the area under the pulse function must be unity. So if you refer to this graph over here, a unit impulse uh, function is denoted by this symbol, uh, this symbol, which is delta t, and you will have an arrow like this. So the area under the pulse function is one unity. 
A unit impulse can be regarded as a rectangular pulse with a width that has become very, very small. So if you see the arrow over here, you know that the width has become very small. The height has become very large. And you have an area that has been maintained at unity, which is 1. Next one, we have exponential. So the exponential function, exponent st, is when you have s is equal to sigma plus j omega. So this is a complex frequency. So exponent st is equal to exponent sigma plus j omega t. So that would give you exponent sigma t times exponent j omega t. And this will give you exponent sigma t times with cos omega t plus j sine omega t. So analog exponentials, the first diagram over here, the top left, is showing you a decaying exponential. So it is going down. The one on the top right would be a growing exponential. It is going up. The third one over here, the bottom left, will be a modul modulated exponential decaying. While the one on the bottom right will be a modulated exponential growing. So please read more on the purpose why modulation and demodulation is needed and try to find out the application of it. So here, the complex frequency plane, you will have on the left half plane an exponential decreasing signal, while on the right half plane will have an exponential increasing signal. So this is, would be the equation for the right hand side. So you will have an exponential 2t cos 5t. So this is just an example. So when you have exponent 2t, times cos 5t. This will be on the right hand side and on the left hand side you can immediately identify when you have exponent minus. The minus sign over here is showing you that it is on the left hand side. Last but not least we have an even and odd signal. So a real function at t is said to be an even function of t if you have at t is equal to x minus t. And a real function at t is said to be an odd function of t if you have at t is equal to minus x minus t. So some of the basic properties of even and odd functions that could be useful for you to remember. So when you have an even function multiply with an odd function, this would give you an odd function. When you have an odd function times with an odd function, you will have even function. And finally, if you have an even function multiply with an even function, this would give you an even function. So just remember that when you have a same signal multiplying together that will give you an even function but if it's a different one then it will give you an odd